Welcome guys. In this video, we are going to study type one, type two errors and power of a test. Um, so making incorrect decisions is an inevitable part of hypothesis testing. Uh, let's take a look at the following table and uh, let's see what kind of decisions we can make in hypothesis testing. Uh, so in columns, we'll have truth. So either null hypothesis is true or alternative hypothesis is true. And uh, in rows here, we have our decisions. So we can make either one of the following two decisions. We can re fail to reject null hypothesis or we can reject null hypothesis. So when we fail to reject null hypothesis, when in fact null hypothesis is true, then we are making correct decision. So in hypothesis testing, there are two types of errors that we can make. Uh, first one is when we reject null hypothesis when null hypothesis is in fact true. Uh, this is usually also denoted as alpha. And second type of error is we make in case when we fail to reject null hypothesis when in fact alternative hypothesis is true. So this probability is usually called as beta and um, corresponds to type two error. And in case when we reject null hypothesis, when not, uh, uh, alternative hypothesis in, is in fact true, then we'll make again correct decision. Let's run down through the following definitions again. So probability of type one error is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is in fact true. It is usually denoted by alpha and we have seen it already when we were conducting hypothesis testing, we're saying that we are conducting hypothesis testing, for instance, on significance level alpha that is equal to 0 0.05. We set alpha by ourselves. Type two error is the probability of failing to reject null hypothesis when alternative hypothesis is in fact true. It is denoted by beta. Uh, so these two are bad probabilities and we would like them as low as possible. And power of a test is identified as one minus beta. So it is equal to one minus probability of type two error and is equal to probability of rejecting null hypothesis when alternative hypothesis is in fact true. So power is a good probability and would like as much power as we can get. Now let's show how to calculate power for two-sided z-test. So power is equal to probability that we reject null hypothesis when in fact alternative hypothesis is true. So we reject null hypothesis uh, for two-sided Z test when our X bar is in rejection region. Um, so X bar. Given that alternative hypothesis is true, meaning that population mean is equal to some value mu one. Now here we have a problem uh, for different values of alternative mean will have different values for power of a test. And uh, we should, in case of two-sided test, we should split that into two cases. First one when um, our alternative mean is less than null uh, mean in null hypothesis and when alternative mean is greater than mean in uh, null hypothesis. All right, so uh, let's take a look uh, at this case. In this case, in a solid black line, we have our null distribution. And in dashed lines here with mean at mu one, this is true distribution. 
So when calculating power, we are looking for probability of rejecting H naught when H alternative is true, meaning that uh, the true population distribution uh, has mean that is equal to mu one. Okay, so X bar in case of two tailed test is in rejection region when X bar either is too small or too large, uh, too far from mu naught. So if you recall from our previous lecture, uh, we calculate, um, we have calculated uh, critical uh, values that separate acceptance from rejection region for two tailed test. So this is X bar when, um, so our rejection region is defined as follows. If we look at null distribution, then we split alpha area into two tails. We'll have alpha over two area in the left and in the right tails. Okay, so, X, so we reject uh, H naught when X bar is uh, less than mu naught plus a uh, critical value at alpha over two. So alpha over two is quantile of normal distribution multiplied by standard error, multiplied by sigma over root of n. All right, and similarly, um, uh, rejection region on the right is defined as mu naught plus uh, one minus alpha over two is quantile multiplied by uh, standard error. So these are conditional probabilities given that um, our population follows a distribution which means that is equal to some value mu one, All right? Now, um, knowing that we can subtract population mean, we can subtract mu one from this value here. So X bar, so in truth, X bar follows normal distribution with mean that is equal to mu one and standard deviation that is equal to sigma over root of n, All right? Then uh, if we are looking for probability that X bar is less than this value, we can standardize that uh, subtracting mu one and dividing by standard error, we'll get CDF of standard normal at this value here. And similarly, standardizing that value and using uh, um, and uh, setting this as one minus probability that x is uh, less than mu naught plus this value here, we'll get one minus CDF of standard normal at this value, standardized value over here. All right, now, um, uh, now uh, writing this down as uh, canceling out uh, dividing everything by standard error, uh, those two will cancel out, we'll get this, this term, then we'll write down um, uh, uh, th this part, uh, mu naught minus mu one over sigma multiplied by root of n. All right, similarly, we'll derive this part here. Okay, now, um, now, um, uh, using symmetry of standard normal, we can write down one minus CDF at X uh, as CDF at minus X. So basically, uh, so basically uh, one minus CDF at X shows as area in the left tail. For instance, this is one minus CDF of X then it is equal to CDF at minus X, right? By the symmetry of standard normal. Okay, now um, replacing this term by CDF at minus this value here. Uh, so writing this term as mu one minus mu naught then, and then replacing uh, Z, alpha over two quantile with one minus alpha over two quantile will get the following expression for power. Okay, now uh, let's take a look uh, here. Uh, so this is our true distribution. This is our null distribution. 
then probability that uh, in this case, probability that X is greater than uh, this uh, critical point uh, show, is shown by the area under our true distribution to the left of this critical point here. Right, so this this blue area corresponds to this probability here. Okay, now, but we also have this left part. This is when X bar is less than this critical value over here. And since we are looking at our true distribution, if we extend this tail here, this probability here is defined as the following red area. And as you can see, so this is defined in the following red area. And as you can see, this area is very small. And usually we can approximate the sum of those two as, uh, as the area of the, of this, uh, as the area under uh, this blue region. And instead of this formula, we can use the following simplified one. So simply uh, send power, power of two-sided z-test is calculated as CDF at minus z1 minus alpha over two quantile plus just take this uh, mu naught minus mu one into the modulus, multiply this by root of n and divided by sigma. Uh, so this formula here neglects, neglects this red part here. Uh, okay, guys, um, we, we are not going to see the calculations for uh, one-sided tests, but they, are, uh, but they are very similar to, uh, to the derivations that we have done now uh, in, in uh, calculations of, of power of one-sided test, we, we even don't have this uh, part here. All right, now that we know how to calculate power of a test, our next question is why should we be bothered with calculation of power of a test? Uh, there are several reasons. Uh, one of them is that power of test completely characterizes the performance of a test. So power of test shows probability that will reject null hypothesis given that alternative is true. So if the power of a test is low, then the probability that you'll find statistically significant results uh, are low, even if alternative hypothesis is true, meaning that what is the point of study then? And other reason is we can use power of test uh, to compare different inference procedures. So we know that power of test depends on value of alternative um, uh, mean in alternative hypothesis, meaning that for different mu ones, we'll have uh, different values of power. And usually we use power curves to compare different inference methods. And uh, here on y axis, we have uh, values of power and on x axis, we have values of uh, parameter in alternative hypothesis. Uh, starting at uh, theta naught uh, value of parameters that is set in null hypothesis. So from this graph, we can see that method B here has a higher power all, um, from what we can see for all values of different theta, meaning that from purely standpoint of power, um, method B is better one than method A. So let's consider the factors that affect the power. If significance level is made smaller, then power is going to decrease. And the reverse is also true. If you increase significance levels, then power of test is going to increase. However, we do not usually increase power of test by making significance level uh, bigger. Since a low significance level is a good probability, since significance level shows probabilities of type one error, probability that we reject H0 when H0 is in fact true. Um, if alternative mean is shifted away from the null mean, mu0 minus mu1 increases, meaning that power increases. However, we have no control over that. 
Uh, if the standard deviation of the distribution of individual observation increases, so population sigma is going to increase, then power is going to decrease. We also have no control over that. If the sample size increases, then power increases. That's the main way we can increase the power of test by taking larger sample sizes. Also, it should be noted that in some cases, making type one error is worse than making type two error. And reverse is also true. In some cases, making type two error is worse than making type one error. Uh, so let's recall our example from one of our previous lecture videos on uh, fuel additive. Let's assume um, we make type one error in fuel additive example. Then it would mean that we incorrectly reject null hypothesis given that null hypothesis is true. And null hypothesis was that um, the fuel was ineffective. Then we uh, if we announce the fuel effective when in fact it is not, pro the company probably is going to spend some money uh, on development of new fuel additive, which in fact turns out to be ineffective. So that making type one error in that case uh, probably would mean um, uh, some monetary costs. Uh, in some cases, making type two error is worse. Uh, so, uh, type 2 error is the probability of failing to reject the null hypothesis when null hypothesis, when alternative hypothesis is in fact true. Uh, let's assume that you are conducting some screening test for some disease and null hypothesis in that case is that uh, your patient, your patient um, uh, is not sick and disease free, then uh, making type two error in that case would mean that you falsely uh, fail to reject um, null hypothesis that uh, the patient is not sick. Uh, and when in fact, let's assume that uh, he has this illness. All right, uh, let's conclude this video with the procedures that will help us to decide uh, what kind of sample size we need for our studies. Uh, given two-sided significant tests uh, will be conducted at alpha level of significance and that true alternative mean is expected to be mu1. Let's assume that you know this. Uh, either you have preconceived idea or you conduct some preliminary study known as a pilot study. Uh, what sample size is needed to be able to detect a significant difference with probability of one minus beta? Uh, so uh, what sample size do we need such that power will be equal to one minus beta? Using the formula for power of two-sided test, we set, um, uh, we set, uh, um, uh, we set it, the power to be equal uh, to one minus beta, uh, which in turn means that um, this value here will correspond to uh, one minus beta's quantile of standard normal, and if here, uh, expressing n in terms of other variables, we'll get a formula for sample size. Uh, so again, suppose we wish to test a hypothesis uh, that mu, uh, null hypothesis that mu is equal to mu naught against alternative hypothesis that mu is equal to mu one, uh, whereas the data are normally distributed with mean mu and known variance sigma squared. Uh, the sample size needed to conduct two-sided test with significance level alpha m power one minus beta uh, is then calculated using the following formula here. Uh, guys, you don't have to memorize that. Uh, you will give a problem on quizzes on, or exams um, where you have to calculate sample size using this formula, then I will include it.